Hi, I'm Sam, and today we're going to turn a Raspberry Pi into a Google Assistant. What you need for the day is going to be a Raspberry Pi running some version of Raspbian OS. I'm using a Raspberry Pi 4, a USB microphone, and either a USB or an analog speaker. First things first, we're going to SSH into my Raspberry Pi. If you're running your Raspberry Pi on a display, this might be easier, but out of my convenience, I'm going to use SSH. All right, to do that, I'm just going to SSH Pi at my Pi's IP address. If you don't know your Pi's IP address, but you are logged into your Raspberry Pi on a display, uh, to find your IP address, just type hostname I, and you can get the IP address. Um, and Pi right here is just my username, and I type in the password for that username in this magic blank spot right here. Okay. Now we're going to be following along with developer.google.com slash assistant sd whatever. I'll link to this in the description. We're going to be following right along with that. Okay, first things first. We're on Raspberry Pi 3, so we want to set up our hardware and network access. So I already have all this done, and I'm assuming you do too, but if you don't, just follow along on these guides right here. Um, All right, so here's what I'm doing. I'm connecting to my Raspberry Pi via SSH. Now let's go to the next step because we're already here. Raspberry Pi 3. Let's test out the audio. So got my Raspberry Pi, got my microphone, plug it in. Got my speaker. Take my speaker. Plug it in. All right. So we'll do that first command they suggest right there, which is a record dash L. Yep, and that's my microphone right there. All right. So I got a bunch of different options here. It's going to be this one, card zero, device zero. So right here, we need to create a new file named .asoundrc in our home.py. I'm in home.py right now. That's what this means. So to do this, I'm going to open it with Vim. I know a lot of you probably don't know how to use Vim, um, so I'll talk along the way. Um, but if you're not sure how to use Vim, I recommend finding something else on the wide range of the internet. I'll talk through what I'm doing now. sudo apt-git install Vim. I already have it installed. And then we're already in our home.py directory. We want to create this file. So we'll just type vim.asoundrc. And it opens our file. So I already have all this, which is similar to what they want here. Um, so we can use our cursor to navigate and type. Um, if you want to start typing, push the I key. And you'll see in the very bottom, it'll say insert, which now means that uh, you're in typing mode. And if you remember the numbers from the commands we executed a little bit ago, my speaker was card zero, device zero. And my mic was card one. Uh, my mic was card one, device zero. So that's why I have those numbers there. And I also create a put in a sample rate uh, to prevent some errors that I was getting later on. Now to get out of Vim, this is what terrifies a lot of people. Uh, you do escape, push the escape key, and the insert thing's gone colon. Now, if you just created this entire file, you're going to want to push X to save. 
So colon X, see this at the bottom right here, colon X. And that saves it. All right. So now let's verify that recording and playback work. All uh, mixer. All right. So that works. And speaker dash test dash T. Wait. Front, left, front, left, front, left. Front, left. All right, control C that. Now we're going to test if the audio works. Copy that from them. Hello, we're recording a little bit right now. Uh, now we'll play it back. Hello, we're recording a little bit right now. Okay, next step. Configure the Actions Console project. So we're going to go into our Actions Console. And we're going to add a new project. So here are my two previous projects. We'll make a new project. Call it Assistant Demo. You call it whatever you want. And then from there, we want to do it device registration we'll scroll down and at the very bottom of that next page we'll see device registration all right keep this browser tab open now we need to enable our api yeah, this was kind of annoying for me before because it would open in a different one of my projects. We'll see what happens here. Okay, yeah, so it's opening in my Prosodic Assistant project. So we need to switch to our uh, assist, Assistant Demo project. Go to Assistant Demo. We'll enable APIs and services. Search for APIs. It's called the Assistant, Google Assistant API. So I'll just type Assistant, yep, on the option, and enable. All right, great. So that's enabled now. Now I have to configure my OAuth consent screen. I'll just click to the link to take me there. Okay, so what am I doing? I'm making an external because I'm just using a regular Gmail account, not like a like a organizational account at all. So I'll create. Now you just tell me type in random stuff here. It's not it's not that random, but. Uh, I like to simplify all these names. This is my fourth one, third project with the Google Assistant stuff. So I'll say project three, choose your email. We're going to use this email. After you have the application name and your support email, uh, don't bother about any of the other options. Save that. Go back to our instructions, setting our activity controls for the account. This basically gives our account just extra permissions. So I've already have it set. Uh, you'll have to go back and do that. Basically, you have to let Google get access to more of your personal data. All right. Register my device model. Okay, so this is where we're going to go back here. We're into that tab that we left open earlier. Register the model. What do we got to do? All right, let's fill in all of these 
but don't make them too long either because you're going to need to use them for a lot of your commands that you run. Uh, I'll call this product demo manufacturer name rasp device type uh, phone. There are no good device types for this. So I just put phone. It really doesn't matter. And then my model ID, this is the one that I mostly want to be short. So I'm just going to call it assistant demo dash nine C. Okay, register model. Now, this is your top secret OAuth 2.0 credentials. We'll download that. Um, and now we want to send it over to the Raspberry Pi if you're using SSH. If you did this on your Raspberry Pi, just move this file to your home.py, home slash pi. I'm going to open up another terminal window so I can use. I'm opening up another terminal window quick so I can use secure copy. So SCP downloads. All right, I'm not going to show you guys this because I don't want you stealing my stuff. Downloads dot JSON. And now we're going to go to pi at 192.168.1.13. Okay, open up our Raspberry Pi. We're going to create our project directory quick so we can send the client secret to that project directory. To do that, I will change directories to get into my desktop. And then from there, I'm going to make a directory assistant demo. Okay, so that directory has been made. Um, okay, final answer. That is what you should run. So now that's in my directory. I'll go ahead and next. And you don't have to bother about specifying any of your traits at this moment. All right, downloaded our credentials. This is basically saying we can go back and fix anything that we didn't care to do earlier. Now on to installing the SDK and sample code. Oh, yeah. I want to hop into my Raspberry Pi SSH sudo at git update. Now let's just copy and paste all this. Okay, now let's change directory into our assistant demo directory or whatever you called your project directory. And we want to start our virtual environment. So we'll go Python 3-m vem. And I'm going to call it env, just like they did. You can do my env, whatever, assistant, anything that's informational for you. Um, now what we have to do is activate our virtual environment. Oh, they want us to upgrade our pip set of tools and wheel before we do that. So I'm going to use a little different command than they, than they do. Python 3-m pip install upgrade pip setup tools wheel. Oh, I have to do sudo. Sudo. All right. Already up to date. Now, source name of my virtual environment. Now we got the little M right here. So we are in our virtual environment. 
right here we gotta install a bunch of stuff copy it and paste it all right and i had a lot of it already installed this might take a lot longer for you or a little longer i have no idea um, so now we're going to install some more stuff in my case i need to do python 3 to get a python 3 package rather than a python 2 uh, you might have to make that change too All right, finally. Uh, and now we're gonna do the authorization authorization tool. Let's go right down the page. I'm gonna change that to Python three again. Okay, and right here is where we actually have to do something. So we're gonna copy that, and it says right here we got path to our client secret. So I'm, right now I'm copying the name of my client secret. And it's just right in my desktop assistant demo. So I don't need to give it any fancy path. Enter the authorization code. All right, so here we go. Visiting the URL. I'm gonna do this in an incognito tab. Sign in. Allow. Allow. Copy, paste, enter. Authorized. We are good to run some sample code. Okay. Let's copy this guy. Now we have to replace two things, device model and project ID. So let's first find our project ID. Click this guy. Our project ID is whatever we called this whole project. In this case, I called it assistant demo. Now our device model ID is going to be this key right here. So all we have to do for this example is to press enter to send a new request. Okay. I want you guys to see these even though you can't really see sound. Hey Google, what's the weather like today in Beijing? In Beijing today, it'll be mostly sunny with a forecasted high of 48 and a low of 22. It's currently 28 with fog. Ooh. All right, control C to get out of that, control C. And there you have it, Google Assistant on a Raspberry Pi. What you can do now is go into some of these example scripts that Google has and edit them. That's what I did in a different video that I made. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and uh, happy coding.